Hello everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com and in this Rhino video tutorial I'll be talking to you about combining three or more pipe objects together. So let's start with a circle and I'll move that circle up in my front view and then I'll use the command array polar and I'll array this around zero three times And these three circles, if I want to make pipes out of them, you can use extrude CRV, but you can also use the gumball. Just drag it down and then hold down the control key before you release that left mouse button. And that will make an extrusion. And I'll do that for the other two. Now the example I'm about to show you will work on a case like this that is even, where they intersect at one point right in the center. But what if one of your pipes is slightly off of that like this. This will complicate the technique uh, just a little bit and so I want to do it this way so that you have uh, a little bit more of a realistic example here in the demonstration. So you start with your three pipes and you select all three of them and you run the trim command. So this will pre-select them as the cutting objects for the trimming operation and then you just click on the parts that you don't want so every other section, and then enter. Uh, I don't think I need my curves in the scene, so I'll select all three at the same time, cell CRV, and then delete. And I'll go into ghosted mode here so we can see inside the objects. And so the first thing I'll do is I'll select this one, and I'll use it to trim this one and this one. So select this first and run the trim command and then click on the parts that you want to remove. Like that. And then I'll select this one and I'll use the trim command. So that is the cutting object. And then I'll select this as the trimming object. And these two I'll join together. And then use that to trim the remaining little bit in the middle. And I'll join all three of those together. And you can see this section right here. So it's just slightly off center, and this will vary depending on what your model is. But this is the area where a fillet will have some trouble. And so what I'd like to do is show you the very first step, which is to run fillet edge. So these are joined together so I can select all of those edges in unison and enter. And the default is going to look like this. It's going to be rolling ball. And it's going to come into a point right here. But at that point, it's going to have to twist a little bit in order to keep following that edge. And so this is going to cause it to not trim and join with the resulting surfaces. And it also won't be quite as smooth as the technique I'm going to show you too. So rather than having these fillets taper to a point, I'd like them to remain a consistent thickness width, rather, and end right before this juncture. So I'll change the rail type to distance between rails, and then I'll say OK. And then I'll take the split command and split by isocurve, and I'll split back each one of these. So I'm going to do that three times by isocurve. And if your object snaps are getting in the way there, just hold down the Alt key, and that'll temporarily toggle them off. And I'll do that split by isocurve on this last one. And the main thing that I'm doing here is I'm creating a space so that I can blend between these edges and encompass all of this area within that boundary between the blend curves. Let me go into shaded mode here so that you can see more clearly what's going on. 
and then I'll use blend CRV and blend CRV exists here in the curve tools it's the icon with the numbers on it and you click on the edges that you want to blend between and I'll use curvature continuity here and say OK and I'll do that for these other two sets as well and let me turn off my ISO curves and my in my display panel here so if you go over to your display panel for the shaded mode you can disable ISO curve display and now we can more easily see those curves I then want to take this collection of three surfaces this poly surface and explode it so that I can individually select each one and I'll use the pull command to pull that curve back to that surface and I can do the same thing on these two so each one of these curves gets pulled to that surface and then you select that curve and you're going to want to join it to this edge and this edge but these are surface edges at the moment and we want to make curves from them so we can use the dupe edge command and duplicate these edges and with them still selected I'll hold down the shift key and I'll add these additional curves to the selection set and then immediately run the join command to join them together okay now I only want to do this on one half of the model so I'm going to chop off one half so I'll just draw a line from this smart track hold down shift straight across like that and perspective is in the top construction plane which allows me to run the trim command well in perspective here and trim off all that and then I'll delete my cutting curve as well as the other side of the fillets okay now I'll take my curves and I'll run the trim command to remove these portions of the surface and that's going to cut this backside too so that we have just the underside of the fillet and then I'll enter to finish the trim command and I'll delete my trim curves now what I'm left with here is trimmed edges that I want to patch between and this edge is the first selection so I'll run the patch command it's in the surface tools this one right here and I'll select this edge then this edge and if you get an edge that selects like this entirely what you'll need to do is you'll need to escape and split this edge so I'll escape out of patch and run the command split edge select this edge and then use end object snaps there and there and I'll run split edge again just to check and escape and split edge check and escape just to make sure those other two edges are split at the locations that I need them to be and then I'll go back into patch now and select these trimmed surface edges and enter and because I selected surface edges I can adjust tangency to them and you have the patch surface options dialog that pops up and what you can do here is change the U and V density so if I click preview here and then turn on my ISO curve display you can see that the patch surface is really just a rectangular surface and the U and V spans are going to be rows of control points and so the more rows you have there on a curved boundary the tighter tolerance you can get there and the more likely it is to actually join so play with the U and V span structure of the patch if it doesn't join uh, raise that U and V count so I'll say OK and then I'll select all my surfaces and join them together like that I'll turn off my isocurve display now and also my edge display so you can see the result and lastly we'll mirror that across X select the mirrored object and join together and then run the cap command to close those planar holes on the ends and that's how you can smoothly blend three or more pipes together and I have an example of this same technique with 
five pipes right here, just to show you. So this is the exact same technique. However, they culminated on one spot in the center, so it was uh, a little bit less complicated than this one, which was off-center, just one of those pipes. And it requires a lot more trimming, so it's uh, more of a puzzle to figure out. But this technique will allow you to smoothly blend multiple pipes together. Uh, lastly, we could put an EMAP on this with the EMAP command, and we can check out that continuity. Alright, thanks for watching.